In every passing day of 2021, it's beginning to seem more and more likely that George Russell will indeed replace Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes this season. It's not confirmed by any means, but with more and more rumours spreading around the community, it's definitely a possibility at this point. Now, I've already talked plenty about George Russell both in my 2021 predictions video and my video on Hamilton just a couple days ago, but if Russell really does indeed get that Mercedes seat, I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a step back in time and take a little look at his incredible motorsports career so far, from his early days in karting to driving the fastest race car the world has ever seen. So let's go back right to the start. Russell started his karting campaign all the way back in a time where Fernando Alonso was still the reigning world champion and some of the greatest legends of modern F1, such as Pastor Maldonado, were still in junior formula. I'm of course talking about 2006. As with pretty much every driver, there's nothing particularly in depth when it comes to their karting careers. But to summarise, George Russell's karting career was incredibly successful, winning multiple national championships such as becoming the MSA British Champion and British Open Champion both in 2009, and then it wouldn't take that long for him to expand his horizons and have a go at the CIK FIA World Championship of Karting, of which he won the title in 2012, joining other notable winners of that championship such as Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. After that pretty successful karting career, it wouldn't be long at all for George Russell to finally take the big step up to cars, and that he did. In 2014, he finally made his long-awaited debut in single-seaters in the Formula Renault 2.0 Championship for Team Coranen GP. This, however, wouldn't have been the ideal season he would have hoped for, finishing down in fourth in the championship, beaten out by Matevos Asaikian, Charles Leclerc and Nick De Vries, with only one single podium to his name at the Red Bull Ring and missing out the penultimate round at Monza due to an illness. So although this championship didn't go as smoothly as he hoped, it was his first ever venture into single-seater racing, but more importantly, that wasn't the only championship he was participating in in 2014. Throughout the year, he was also taking part in the British Formula 4 championship, in which he barely won the title by just a three-point margin after that final race in Snetterton, and just looking at how close the standings were for this championship, it makes me sad how spaced apart the standings are in modern F1, but I digress. Now, over the next couple years, in 2015 and 2016, George Russell will go on to take part in the FIA Formula 3 Europe Championship, which again was not as successful as he would have hoped, with an overall 6th place finish in the 2015 Championship and a much better 3rd place finish in 2016. His 2016 season for High Tech GP was much more successful with two wins throughout the season at Spa and Po, but unfortunately being beaten out of the title by quite some margin by Maximilian Gunter and the champion Lance Stroll. So by this point, George Russell's junior motorsports career, although pretty good, was still a long way off the extraordinary talent needed by the teams to make a seat in Formula 1. But now we come on to 2017, where the talent really started to shine through in my opinion. In 2017, George Russell competed in the GP3 series for Team ART alongside teammates Jack Aitken, Nuve Fukuzumi and the late Antoine Hubert, with Russell absolutely dominating the grid to win the championship by almost 80 points over next place driver Jack Aitken. And then of course we come on to his most famous year in his junior Formula career, the 2018 Formula 2 World Championship driving for ART and getting quadruple the amount of points over teammate Jack Aitken throughout the course of the season, easily proving to Formula 1 that he is the man for the job. So of course, everyone already knows about George Russell's domination this season, winning the championship, finishing once again around 80 points ahead of second place Lando Norris and third place Alex Albon, with 11 podiums and 7 wins to his name throughout the course of the season. By the end of the year, Russell was definitely more than qualified to race in the Formula 1 World Championship. Looking at his super license at the time, his first place in Formula 2, which by itself would have been enough to get the 40 points required to race in Formula 1, on top of his third place finish in Formula 3 Europe and his first place finish in GP3 would have by far gotten him over the minimum threshold to make his way into a Formula 1 seat. 
And then, of course, 2019 rolls around and George Russell begins his Formula 1 campaign for Williams F1 team alongside teammate Robert Kubica. And, of course, we know just how terrible this year was for the guy, being the only driver to not score a point throughout the entire season and stuck dead last in the championship, with teammate Kubica scoring a single point for 19th in the championship with that infamous soaking wet 2018 German Grand Prix at Hockenheim. To be fair, we of course know he wasn't being held back by his skill, but more because of the absolute tractor of a car he was driving, the incredibly slow 2019 Williams, and this kind of carried on into 2020 as well, with Williams becoming the first team to not score a single point throughout the season since Marussia back in 2015. So George Russell's 2020 season was undoubtedly pretty terrible, limited by his slow Williams, although not quite as bad as what we saw in 2019, but of course we can still compare him to his teammate in the same car, former Formula 2 rival Nicholas Latifi, of which Russell outplaced him in qualifying for every race of the season, with Latifi only beating him during a race on two separate occasions throughout the year. Although Russell did have a couple moments throughout the year with Williams where he did bottle the chance for points, most notably his crash behind the safety car at Imola, his true opportunity would come later that year at the Sakir Grand Prix, replacing the ill Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes alongside Valtteri Bottas. This was Russell's moment, driving the fastest Formula 1 car to ever exist at the front of the field, destined to win his first Formula 1 Grand Prix with some amazing passes on teammate Bottas. Us. The stars had aligned, starting in P2, fans across the world were cheering him on, this was his moment, until Mercedes messed up the pit stops. So as we all know, this unusual tyre mix-up at Mercedes robbed George Russell of his maiden Grand Prix victory, with him eventually finishing down in P9 with the fastest lap of the race, which was his first point finish in Formula 1, but it could have been so, so much more. And now we skip ahead to present day, 2021. If George Russell really does replace Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes this year, then he will almost certainly be in contention for becoming the 2021 Formula 1 World Champion, and from my point of view, he has an unparalleled junior motorsports career in which he's won a championship in every stage of his single-seater racing venture. He's a champion in multiple karting championships, both national and international, a champion of Formula 4, a champion of Formula 3, a champion of Formula 2, and potentially by the end of this year, a champion of Formula 1. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, comment, share, and I'll be back in the next video. See ya!